everyone, I'm Luke Flywalker and this is SO Aviation Magazine issue 15. Today we're at the grand opening of Alexandar International Airport located on the north coast of Satori just southwest of Nautilus. We will also take a look at another new airport named Quietly Red, a small airfield with a cozy field designed as a restful hangout for weary aviators. We'll see some clips of the grand opening activities at Alexander, and then we'll have a chat with helicopter builder Sal Fireguard. We'll take a peek at his Animate Works S-300 Marine Copter, and then he'll take me up for a flight lesson. Should prove to be an interesting show. We've got a lot to do, so let's get moving. I'm here at Alessandar International Airport with my friend Basilicum Beerbaum. We attempted a voice interview, but the VOIP gods were just not favoring us that day. Bass is a gracious host and a very nice guy who chatted with me at some length about the opening of his new airport. I will share that with you now as I show you some video clips of the airport facility. The airport is owned by the Friends Aviation Group, and those members are Soar Wingtips, Basilicum Beer Bomb, Echo Block, and Area Beer Bomb. The facility manager at the airport is Durham Darkfold, and Bass calls him the man who never sleeps. He's the chief uh, building advisor and the expert on the sim, and Durham does a great job, and if you have any problems there or need any questions answered about the facility or rental hangars, look up Durham. He'll be glad to help you. The airport covers the most of four sims. There's a terminal building with an ATC tower. There's two runways, 256 meters long, and there's also uh, ample rental hangars available. I asked Bass why he opened such a large airport, and he said he felt like SL needed a place to accommodate all the lovely new mesh airliners that are being built now. Bass has been involved with SL Aviation for seven years now, mostly as an observer looking in from the outside, and then just recently deciding to become actively involved. He's an avid uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator participant, uh, but he felt like eventually that he wanted to get involved in SL Aviation, and he says his inventory is filled with planes. I asked Bass about the facilities that are being offered now and the future plans for expansion and he tells me that at the moment they are concentrating on providing rental space for aircraft hangars, uh, their main attraction being the parking aprons for the 737 sized aircraft. They also offer helipads, the terminal building provides four working jetways, three have been rented and the fourth will be for general use. There is also a marina and a shuttle bus service. Let me put on some music and we'll take a look at the grand opening activities that took place this week.
The grand opening grid flight originated at SL Quietly Red Airport, a new airport located just above Nautilus Island at the northeast end. The airport is owned and operated by Serena Lexington and Chloe. They have been open since the end of February. The theme of this airport is cozy and welcoming. It's a mid-size airfield with an aero club feeling, the kind of place pilots like to hang out and have a good time in the spirit of aviation fun. The runway can accommodate aircraft in size up to DC-3. They offer a bar and lounge with access to the sea as well as a fire department and refueling station. Serena and Chloe hope Quietly Red will be the place you want to be to meet cool aviation passionate people. You'll want to put Quietly Red on your next grid flight plan. Uh, here with Sal Fireguard and we're going to talk about his uh, helicopter creations. How are you doing today Sal? Not too bad Luke. Good. Good to be here. Yeah, it is. It's a neat place. They've done a pretty good job of getting this place set up, too. Looks pretty awesome. So, uh, let, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let, let's uh, get some background information here. Uh, how long have you been involved with uh, SL Aviation? Oh, about four years now. Okay. Uh, I date back to some of the earlier days of uh, Hawkside Airport and Jidge out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was an awesome place. I remember that's kind of I spent some time there myself back in the day <laughs> that's funny so oh yeah in back day, in the here. day <laughs> okay no doubt so uh, how'd you get into building helicopters well I'll tell you um, with me it was more labor of love I just kind of fell in love with uh, Terry C uh, Cubby, T Cubby Terra's old machines and uh, Pat Lawson's from Real Flight and I decided to have a go at it myself. Awesome. So tell us about the uh, uh, scripts in your helicopters, the Real Flight scripts, and that seems to set them apart from the standard copters that I've flown around here. Well yes, uh, these are all proprietary uh, built from scratch scripts by Pat Lawson of Real Flight. Um, he really does aim at getting as much realism in flight as possible. Uh, try to take advantage of all the aspects of helicopters. Uh, everything from ground effects to uh, ceiling heights. Also turbulence. Turbulence being a big key part of your experience when you're flying it. Uh, a lot of a lot of helicopters that I've flown in the past fly like they're well, shall we say, mounted on railroad tracks yes. in the sky, and that's not the way a real helicopter flies at all. They are they're a living machine. They move around. Uh, there's very little straight line flight with them. You know, even in uh, high speed straight line flights, you're still moving about the air. And you should feel that. Right. I've never flown a helicopter, but I've flown in a helicopter, so you know, I know the, the feeling of being in one. And, uh, oh, yeah. I have to agree with what you're saying there. And I'm told the, from the helicopter pilots that they are very difficult to fly. Not just anybody can hop in. Yes, they are. So, okay. Well, one person uh, described it long ago as 10,000 individual pieces trying to fly apart all at once. Yeah. So, uh, well, I've, uh, I've logged a lot of time in the passenger seat. I used to go up and do uh, aerial videos. Oh, wow. And, <clears throat> and I'd be cameraman, uh, usually sitting in the co-pilot seat. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, a lot, of lo a lot of hours logged. Oh, wow. Be an awesome job. Uh, so tell us, tell us about your build specifically. Is there anything, you know, besides the scripts that's unique about them? I'm st sitting here looking at this uh, copter behind us, and it's pretty awesome looking. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I'll tell you. I've uh, been a game modder for oh, roughly about thirty some years. Uh, worked a lot with racing games in the past, so. You know, this is something that's uh, 
carried over into my builds here. Once Linden Labs opened up mesh, all my birds are mesh. They're high detail. Uh, try to get as low a prim as possible for the amount of details that you've got without having to have anything attachment-wise or anything like that from the older series script, uh, scripting for high detail birds. I also do a lot with uh, the UV maps so that everybody that buys one can take a Photoshop template that I supply and whether they use Photoshop or GIMP or any of the various programs they can do a layered uh, painting of this. All the guidelines are there for actually uh, laying down paint and it's real easy to do. Yeah that's awesome that seems to be a trend too and I'm glad it's going that way where builders are making things that we can customize now so that, that's really an awesome feature. Uh, so well it's one that's long needed in the second life really. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. Uh, so are, is there any new products that you're working on that you can tell us about? Well yes there is. I, I'm not going to show it at this time. Okay. I've got a couple of people out there with pictures of it but uh, I am working on an aerospatial SA-315B Llama. It's going to be extremely high detail, four passenger, jet powered, and it's going to have all the real flight scripting, and it, we're going to be doing some new stuff with it. I'm not going to give away the, the bag just yet, but it's going to have some really nice scripting to it. Uh, so where can we yeah. buy your products at, in world, and uh do you have demos available? Well, the demos, no. I don't have demos for say. We have uh, at our main office, Real Flight and Animate Works, uh, we do have a demo reser. It just reses a bird that you can't fly, but you get to see it. Okay. And if somebody wants to fly one, what I'll do is I'll take them up, I'll put them either as a co-pilot or I'll guest them a bird and let them fly. It, it does take a little bit of getting used to because the scripts are a little bit more realistic than uh, a lot of helicopters you fly in Second Life. For instance, as you pitch forward to speed up the helicopter in forward flight, you're going to have to add collective uh, power to it to keep it at a level flight. That's not something that every bird does. Usually you just point them and you know tell them how fast you want them to go okay. so, but with ours you pretty much have to fly it the whole time uh -huh. do you fly it in, in uh, mouse mouse view <laughs> well we've actually got uh, three different modes of operation we've got keyboard flight and you can do that from both uh, fly behind camera and uh, mouse look cameras and all the functions fly, or all the functions work. Then we've also got a brand new mode for mouse look flight that is actually mouse controlled. So it's it's actually a keyboard and mouse control because you're still going to need the keyboard for certain aspects. But primarily most of the operations can be done with your mouse. It's something that uh, takes a little bit of practice it's not an easy mode to fly but I'll tell you what most of the uh, real-life pilots really dig that uh, get them complimenting it all the time and you know showing off what they can do with it and it's it's very exhilarating okay uh, like if you don't mind maybe you take me up and, and uh, let's take it for a test spin but before we do, is there anything else you'd like to say about your copters, your business, or SL Aviation in general? Well, I'll tell you what, I've been around SL Aviation for a long time, done a lot of air shows, worked with a lot of pilots. I'll tell you what, if anybody out there hasn't got involved in SL Aviation yet, please do. You're really missing out. This is an awesome experience, and I hope that you know, the Animate Works helicopters and Real Flight have actually helped, 
you know, provide something extra to that community. We're shut here in just a second. Have you uh, ever flown a real flight bird before? Uh, you know, I'm trying to think. I don't believe I have. No. Well, I'll tell you what. You're going to have an experience. And... <laughs> I may shut the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Whatever you like to do. <laughs> We're just going to take up... Uh, Get us off the ground just a little bit here, and I'll get us out over the field. I'm going to let you take over. These are uh, very precise in flight. So when you do start uh, trying it out, take it slow. You want to tap the keys. Don't hold them. Okay. Is it standard uh, keys? Standard keys, yeah, page up, page down, your cursor keys. And you can also uh, shift when using cursor left or right. Uh, okay. Essentially what that's going to do is give you a slow turn. Let's just get up here a little bit further here. I just want to make sure that there's no real obstacles around. I'm going to set her back down. Okay. Now, you notice that there is a uh, heads-up display here. Uh, it's a text one, uh -huh, I see that. and whether you're looking in mouse look, you'll see it on the front dash, or whether you're looking in rear view, you're going to see it across the tail plane of the bird. Uh, starting at the top, you're going to have collective, and that's your power, the amount of power and uh, pitch on the rotors. All right, now I'm going to run the uh, collective up to 50, okay. and that's going to be basically a hover. Now I'm just tapping page up to get that. And you notice the bird slides back because right now it's pitched back just a little bit. I touched the cursor forward a couple of times and it just settles right down there and it'll hover. If I go uh, 51, it's going to actually gently lift off the ground. 52 would be a little bit faster and so on. Basically you're giving more power to the left. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type copilot and I'm going to let you play with the controls a little bit. Okay, now you have the uh, control stick. Let's see what you can do with it. Remember to tap the controls. So you can hold left and right, but forward, and back, or page up, page down, tap. You can hold them once you're used to the bird, but getting used to the bird, you want to take it nice and easy. thousands of man hours before they're ever released to the public. I've got uh, testers in real life pilots. So, and, and they're also rated in various types of aviation uh, equipment. But uh, I've also got testers pilots. What's up? Yeah, that can happen as you're crossing the border. There you go. And once you're over open water, if you want to uh, drop the collective down to about 46, 47, let's uh, touch down on water and do a lift off. There you go. And, and you notice the floats actually work like the real one. They'll actually sink down in. One of the things that I was explaining earlier is the physics is actually what's controlled by the scripts. You'll find is as you speed up, your turning radius is going to be 
That's it for this issue. I hope you all enjoyed our show. I'm back at Tag City. They have the lighter than airships on display this week and I've got my steampunk hat on and I'm ready for a hot air balloon flight. Stop on by and take a ride in the balloon and look at all these amazing creations. Until next time, this is Luke Flywalker saying, happy flying. collective work <laughs>